Hey guys, thanks for hanging out. Doug back again. I got a few things to show you. But uh, first off, I got my first ever VCLT this week. And not surprisingly, it's from DJ Trish, Trish Mullins, the VC's own queen of the mix. She very kindly sent me a couple of her CD mixes. See that there? That one's called Eclectic Elements. And this one is called Island Jamboree. You got my number there, Trish. And eclectic is the, definitely the key, the key word there. So uh, I was going to do a live opening of those, but uh, I didn't have a chance to do a video for a couple of days, and I just couldn't wait. Had <laughs> had to open it. So there it is. Thank you again, Trish. If you guys haven't, uh, for some reason, haven't checked out her channel, I can't think why, but uh, definitely do so. Trish Mullins, thanks again. And I got some mail order stuff recently I thought I'd show at the same time. I'm just uh, inside trying to cool off for a little bit. Take a break from the heat. I got, uh, this is a reissue, or mail order. I feel the spirit, Prince Buster. This is mid-60s, I think. This is Ska, recent reissue on the Dynamite, Dynamite label. Prince Buster was uh, kind of one of the key guys in Jamaican music in the ska era of the 60s. He was a uh, emerged as uh, he was working for the big two producers, Duke Reed and Clement Seymour Coxon Dodd, CS Dodd as he's called from Studio 1. And then he struck out on his own and was kind of one of the uh, the main guys trying to move away from the uh, the reliance on records imported from the US in kind of the R&B blues style and uh, toward more of a homegrown recording industry, which be in turn uh, begat ska. And the most uh, biggest name in ska, of course, is the Scatolites. This is a Duke Reed production on Treasure Isle. Clear vinyl reissue. This just came out. I had this on CD for years and years, so uh, I've never seen it available on uh, vinyl, so I grabbed this. Very nice pressing, heavy, sounds great for the age of the recordings. Uh, it's got some uh, top Scatolites tunes on here. Carry Go Bring Come, the, uh, the classic with Justin Hines and the Dominoes. Uh, 12 Minutes to Go, Dandelion, Eastern Standard Time, one of their top tunes. And a couple of vocals, Stranger Cole, Stranger and Patsy, as well as um, Justin Hines. And I got two by Laurel Aitken. These are kind of late 60s, early 70s. Fantastic Laurel Aitken. And the High Priest of Reggae. These are also uh, very new reissues on the um, Radiation label. Uh, Laurel Aitken, kind of a, not a big name. He was uh, originally born in Cuba moved to Jamaica and from there migrated on to the UK. Moved through kind of a variety of musical styles as he progressed in his travels from um, kind of blue bead, R&B, jump blues style of the early six, late 50s, early 60s, through the ska era and then into the reggae era, uh, which was uh, the late 60s, early 70s is kind of his uh, height of popularity as he uh, relocated to the UK and became uh, known for what was called skinhead reggae, which was kind of a, a choppy rhythm. There was a lot of instrumentals by the upsetters and people like that, which was very popular with uh, the UK audience and particularly the youth subculture called the skinheads, which is not to be confused with the, uh, the North American connotation of the term. Some of the skinheads uh, favored Jamaican music, soul music, things like that. Uh, Laurel Aitken kind of um, kind of uh, did a bit of mento, which is the Jamaican version of calypso as well, which is a style of music that's known for kind of a news of the day kind of lyrics, and he he does that. He does some um, a lot of cover versions. Don't be cruel by Elvis is on here, and um, a few kind of conversational, sometimes um, salacious songs, and also. Uh, he did one by called Haile Selassie, which is kind of a unusual 
unusual reference to the uh, Rastafarian deity at that time. They tended to uh, kind of, a lot of the musicians from the 60s would be Rastafarians, but uh, they would tend to be a little more um, discreet in their lyrics and kind of couch it in kind of Old Testament style metaphors rather than coming right out and saying things directly. There's another reissue, capital letters, Vineyard. This is a new release on green sleeves through the VP imprint of a album that originally came in 1982 on the Galt label, I think. It didn't originally come on green sleeves. But very nice album by them. And this one is Ranking Dread, Girls Fiesta. This is on the uh, Hot Milk label, which is distributed through Cherry Red in the UK, which has been around, uh, Hot Milk's a label that's been around for only a couple of years, but is starting to build up a pretty decent catalog of reggae reissues. They uh, kind of started out CD focused, but they're starting to move more into vinyl and some very tasty stuff coming out. Uh, Ranking Dread is kind of notorious in reggae. He was a DJ, kind of from late 70s, early 80s was his era. Tended to have kind of happy-go-lucky album covers, but uh, not a nice man at all away from the microphone. He was a uh, hardcore Jamaican bad man, or gangster. Uh, very violent, very dangerous. Uh, moved from country to country. Even his real name isn't really known for sure. He used a bunch of aliases. But, um, yeah, apparently he was uh, wanted for up to, in connection with up to 30 murders in Jamaica, and eventually met a violent end in prison. So kind of uh, very notorious in the reggae world. It's been kind of mythologized to some extent. A couple from the Pressure Sounds label. Kind of one of the last of the 90s reissues labels that's still around. Consider yourself the interns. They are better known as the Viceroys of Yahoo fame, which is reworked on this album under the title Jaho. This is produced by Phil Pratt. Very solid, full of roots album. Recorded at Channel One. Heavy sound quality on here. That was the 86th release on Pressure Sounds, and this is the 87th. Jimmy Riley, Live It to Know It, which is a compilation of some of his work from 1975 to 1985. I have a couple of other LPs by him. The uh, one I have called uh, Put the People First. This picture is actually on the back cover of that LP. Jimmy Riley went back to the rock steady days. He was in the Uniques with Slim Smith. Uh, something of a journeyman singer. His biggest hit probably came with uh, Sly and Robbie's Taxi label in the early 80s, where he recorded Love and Devotion, his biggest hit. Uh, he's also the father of Taurus Riley, who's a very popular modern Jamaican singer. Jimmy Riley, apparently he's in poor health right now. I got a couple of 12 inch singles. Roman Stewart, Rice and Peas, reissue on the Hungry Town label. Original of this will set you back uh, well into the double figures, if not triple. I think there's one for sale for like 175 bucks on Discogs. Heavy tune. Hungry Town label was a, a label that didn't put out a whole lot, it was produced by Everton De Silva. Had a bit of a connection with Augustus Pablo. Had a, so he put out kind of a small but uh, very decent output of work before his untimely death. I got 12 inch on the, says Jaw Life, which is a reproduction of the label, but it's actually on the uh, Deeper Knowledge DKR Records label. This is a, uh, I had picked up an album by Ras Michael and the Sons of Negus called Love Thy Neighbor, which collected some of the last recordings produced by Lee Scratch Perry at the Black Ark before he kind of uh, self-destructed and, according to legend, burned down the, the studio. And these were a few of the tunes that didn't make it on that album that they, they managed to rescue the tapes from as things were falling apart. And 
one last 12 inch Carl Malcolm repatriation roots recycler label I got a Numero reissue the notations still here classic Chicago soul just beautiful vocals on here um, and just a fascinating biography too I won't go too much into it here but to story of kind of a kind of gives you an insight into what it was like to be a, a working working soul group in those days and run-ins with uh, gangsters and things like that and I had a few thrift finds as well I'll just quickly run through got the kinks the file series that's on pi don't have much kinks in my collection we kind of don't see a whole lot in this part of the world but it's, Got all their, their 60s classics on there, so nice to have that. And, uh, there's, I found out I, I know more of their tunes than I thought I did. There was a, a few I recognized that I didn't really put together that it was the Kinks. Uh, I have another update film that I haven't even gotten around to uploading yet. And in it I showed one by uh, Katie Lang, which I, was, uh, I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would. And after I, I did that video, I found this one, another one by her, A Truly Western Experience. This is her debut from uh, 1984. It's on Bumstead Records out of uh, Vancouver, BC, local. And uh, this one, the other one was uh, very much in uh, Patsy Klein style and working with their producer. And uh, Patsy Klein's actually a picture on the cover there. Huge influence for Katie Lang, but uh, she also gets into some kind of bluegrass and honky tonk and rockabilly music on here. And a bit more country, Waylon Jennings is a very early one by him. Very nice shape on Vocal Lion. I believe this is actually a reissue of his debut album called Live at JD's or something. But I'd have to check into that further. And I came up, uh, my last haul at the thrift store, I came up on a bunch of folk albums in almost near mint condition, which is kind of not a, a big thing I collect, but I kind of had to go for these ones. This was kind of an unusual one. It's uh, Yolo Camba Ita, Canto a la Patria Revolucionara. This is from 1981. It's recorded in Vancouver, kind of a private press kind of deal. This is basically Latin folk. There is kind of a funky break on the uh, title track. Uh, very uh, it's all in Spanish, so I, I don't understand the lyrics, but uh, very uh, political motivated. They were uh, exiled from El, El Salvador, apparently. So one track is called War Production, and the, the title track is called Song to the Revolutionary Homeland, as well as a, a couple of uh, what looks like more whimsical or romantic tunes on here. But like the political tunes have like gunshot sound effects and stuff, so gives you an idea what's uh, what was going on and if you want extra copies of this album you're directed to contact either the Vancouver Folk Music Festival or the Democratic Revolutionary Front in Montreal so that was kind of interesting this one I'd seen around before but uh, usually kind of beat up it's a folk group from Surrey BC which is very near me Called, the group is called Bargain at Half the Price, and the album is called A New Wind Blowing. Very much in the traditional folk styles. And I found a bunch by Pete Seeger, Abby Yoyo. Uh, his greatest hits. I had this one already, but uh, a little beat up. This one's still in the shrink. And uh, This is an older one. Concert at Children's Hall. Circles and Seasons. These are kind of uh, all from different decades. Well, there's like two from the 60s and then one from the 70s. And I enjoyed those a bit more than I thought I would. Like I said, folk, kind of not a big thing for me, but uh, you see something in that condition in the thrift store, you, you don't pass it up. And a couple other ones I, pa I found in the thrifts. Mick Ronson, Lay Don't Worry. Cover a little beat up, but the vinyl's pretty good. And Flo and Eddie, which uh, I really enjoyed this one actually. 
I haven't checked uh, too much of their stuff. They're the jokesters from uh, the Turtles and Frank Zappa's Mothers. And that one would just sound great cranking out of your 8-track player in the early 70s. And lastly, Mad Dog, John Entwistle's Ox. It's not great, but pretty good. There's one kind of, kind of funky tune on here, actually. So that was about it. Like I said, I've got another update ready to go for you guys. I'll just maybe give it a little, little time. And um, by all means, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Thanks again, Trish. I'll definitely be cranking those. Peace, guys. Cheers.